So, um, I've been playing with the Arduino again and just got to a nice little point so I thought I'd set, set it down on video. Um, what I'm wanting to use the Arduinos for primarily is the Elfquake project but also, which is going to be basically sensors and recording stuff. Um, but also I'm trying to explore in what the Arduinos are capable of and I also want to put together a, a hybrid um, analog Arduino um, music synthesizer. And looking at the output of the Arduino, um, this, one of the standard techniques is to use a pulse wave modulated output from one of the digital pins uh, to convert that to an analog signal. But you're limited to at best um, eight bits on, on one pin, or it may be more, I'm not sure. Um, yes, it's eight bits. Um, but for music applications, like you're aiming for 16 bits. And um, on that output side, pairing up a pair of pulse wave modulated outputs and scaling the output so one of them is providing the high byte and one of them is providing the low byte. In principle you can get 16 bits out. Um, in practice almost certainly not but um, a lot of the circuits I've seen so far have been oversimplified and so I've started putting together a little test bed um, to try and work out on the analog side get a, a, a much improved output circuit than the, the usual ones, but still taking it from the pulse wave modulator, just adding a few op-amp um, bits of analog electronics. Um, to that end, I found a, um, a little circuit, a little bit of code, a little sketch, for um, getting 16 bits out um, using the pulse wave modulator method. Um, which is rather confusing time of stuff to look at, but stuck it together and on top of that I slapped inserted into the, the original demo code used a um, used the analog ignore that for the moment, that lot. Just looking at this bit. Used an analog in um, as an input, which gives a maximum of twelve bits, and then output um, through just as a demonstration of using the 12 bit. I'll put all the relevant links in the uh, description. What there is on that side is a little hack together signal generator and I've got a notch filter here um, that um, so I can do distortion tests. So I bung a um, 1 kilohertz sign in. I was just testing it to see how well that came out the notch filter and it turns out the passive notch filter circuit the bog standard one which op amp buffered turns out to be very good but that's not what I'm talking about here on the Arduino side I've got two output pins one of them's going to a 1k resistor the other one's going to two resistors in series in yeah in series that add up to Oh yeah, they add, they add up to 256. Um, so one output is 256 times the other. So you've got high byte and low byte. Um, now the output I'm getting at the moment, if this is all set up right, I'm just pumping it out through. Oh yeah, and all I've got here is a very simple, did have, with the capacitor. The two output resistors going through a capacitor into this little uh, computer speakers as an amplifier. And there, I think you can hear quite clearly a bit of white noise. So that bit works. Um, what's kind of interesting is at this stage, if you just listen to the... Um, program, that's um, just the low bytes, I think. One set of bytes and that is the other which well hang on let me just make it a little bit 
bit louder. Let's put these over here. Why am I punching it at this? Which I'm guessing is the <laughs> So anyway, with this very minimal bit of circuit, it's basically working. So I want to get both of these out and get all the levels sorted out, add some more intelligent filtering. But already you can hear that's um, on this signal generator here. I added a added a fairly standard um, just a, a single transistor transistor reverse bias so it's generating a noise and if I pop that out and into the speaker and do that without breaking everything clumsy fingers um, you can hear very very similar that's the analog, pure analog noise. And where it, where has it gone? Where has it gone? Oh yeah, that's the one from the from the Arduino. Now the the algorithm I'm using for the noise generation itself, linear feedback shift register, and it's only actually, it's a very, very simple bit of code. There are two standard configurations, most common configurations for the uh, linear feedback shift register. One is the Fibonacci. Basic setups like that, with each of the blocks on top being a single bit, and you've got a couple you've got, well there you've got three exclusive OR gates doing feedback over the shift register and it's very very easy to implement in code. Um, a variation on it which is slightly more efficient is the Galois version but it's, again it's very very simple code and um, the biggest difference you might no, apart from the efficiency, the Fibonacci version of the linear feedback shift register goes ciao. The Galois version goes bonjour. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, so far so good. And. I'll post all the relevant links below. Um, oh, one other little thing that was kind of interesting was the using the um, using the <coughs> pulse wave modulator out. Um, you've got a couple of alternatives. Um, one is to do it fast, and the other is to do it phase correct. Um, now, at the moment, it's on the phase correct version. Now, if I just flip the code a second, so it's going on the fast. Now, you can hear that's quite even sounding. Um, and I'll just upload the modified version. Oh, I can barely hear it. I can barely hear it, so I doubt whether you can at all. Um, it's very, very subtle. There's a hint of a cycle to it. <laughs> um, it's not very significant, really, but might be worth considering with different kinds of signals going through it. All right, so there you go. Um, nice day here, so I'd better go and do something outside, I guess. Okay, ciao and uh, ciao and.
Au revoir.